So my husband John and I came to Rome 13 years ago and we came for the purpose of doing our advanced degrees. We anticipated staying two years, maybe three years, but in oh so many ways we have just felt the Lord speak to our hearts and let us know that this is where He wants us now. I've been leading pilgrimages to Europe and the Holy Land for about 17 years. I was doing a lot of traveling and being away from home was kind of a bit much, you know, with two little kids. And so my wife one day said, why don't we just move to Rome? And we figured out a way to make it happen. I experienced a transformation in my relationship with Rome from my first trip here, when I was like, oh my gosh, get me out of this noisy, dirty, crowded city, to uh, like Queen Christina of Sweden, I couldn't live another day if I didn't live it in Rome. You have that seven-year itch they talk about in a marriage. So in my very happy marriage to Rome, my over 20-year marriage to Rome, this was the year of crisis. I felt myself imprisoned in my own home. A business that I had spent 20 years building in this city with tremendous respect of the city, You're becoming an official guide, going through all these processes that, that the government requires to be one of them, then to find myself completely forgotten and left by the wayside in a program that just simply said, no work for you, we don't know when you're ever going to have work again, and we don't really have any plans or, or, or any compensation for you. And so it really was a very, very challenging moment. I've had quite a few guide friends that move back to the States. There's no work, there's no way to pay the rent, so they move back with their parents. There was a few moments where we thought like, oh, maybe we should go back to the States. But we thought this is where we needed to be at this moment, and so we stayed. Our work opportunities were almost all canceled. and So John and I looked around at our new reality, which was pretty much the confines of our apartment. And we realized, okay, let's see, we're in lockdown, but we have to remember that the gospel cannot be quarantined. So how are we going to continue to spread the good news? I started making a video every single day just about what was going on. And then once the pandemic, or once the quarantine lifted, I was able to go out and start showing Rome. I didn't have tours, obviously, with people, but I had people wanting to donate and help me out because I was helping them explore from their homes. Both a friend of mine in Florence and my own colleagues at Masters Gallery Rome, we started a weekly free lecture program, both of us, and we simply asked for donations. And we have found that people are very generous. People were coming to us with lots of questions. They wanted information. They were scared. They were even losing hope in some cases. So we started doing the thing we could do to reach out to all these people, which was to create little videos, little vignettes that offered information, that offered hope, and that brought some levity and joy in an otherwise difficult moment. And it was, it was an amazing way to reach out. One of the ways to navigate this uncharted area has been to kind of allow in this age where really generosity, kindness, understanding, and compassion is essential to kind of allow, we'll put ourselves out there, will you help us? And I think it's been, I think it's been successful. I started a Patreon page where people could help me out. This is my way of evangelizing, so I don't want to like put it behind a paywall. And so that's been, that's been helpful and it's given me a reason to stay and to go out and to share the faith. You know, I think living in Rome is a place that really helps you realize the beauty of living in Providence and relying only on God's grace. Because that's, that's really the way of survival here. <laughs>